Hello everyone and welcome to Thailand Unplugged. Let's have a little preview of some of the news we've got coming up today. Royalists turn on Princess Udon Aratana because she sticks up for the Thai people, who is the eldest sister of the current king. Not a good idea. Current Thai king commutes death sentence of UK pair killers to life in prison. A very controversial story which we'll have a little bit of a look at. The experts in Thailand call for less emphasis on tourism and more on the economy and getting the Thai people to support its own country. Over to Bali now and an Aussie and an Indonesian girl admitted to and convicted of selling drugs in Bali have had their sentences reduced. They nearly faced a death sentence. Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Clark, bringing you the latest news from Southeast Asia and the wonderful land of smiles, Thailand. Those and many other stories coming right up. Bangkok. An eldest sister of His Majesty the King of Thailand on Friday came under a slew of online insults from members of the pro-monarch factions. The wave of criticism follows Princess Ubon Ratana online post in which she said freedom of expression should be upheld a remark seen by some as a disapproval of the crackdown on a pro-democracy protest. One of the disparaging posts was published by the Facebook account belonging to POP, an anchor on national TV's evening news program. Have you forgotten your father, who built up a civilization for 70 years and did everything for his world subjects? Today, kids high on sniffing glue and history of attacking your father, but you are agreeing with him? The Post wrote, it went on to say Ubon Ratchina should think of her father, mother, little brother, the king, and younger sister before speaking. Tananam, our pop as people like to call him, later said his Facebook was hacked and he denied any involvement in the incident. His account has been deactivated. Another Facebook warrior, Captain Poo Kem, a neo-monarchist who runs a Facebook page with more than 100,000 followers, posted a photo of Ubon Rachina on Friday with a scathing caption. When you are a teenager, you made your parents so sad. Now that you are old, you are plotting to destroy your family and the country, he wrote. Songkalod or Captain Pukem, as he's affectionately known as, also wrote an insult regarding the way Udon Rachina dressed in the photo. She said herself we could criticize her, Songkalon added. Princess Ratana relinquished her royal status when she married an American in 1972, though King of Thailand at the time said in a statement in 2009 that she is still considered part of the royal family. In her reply to these outbursts, asked for her opinion on the ongoing protests and harassment of citizens, Princess Udon Ratana wrote on Thursday, all citizens have the right to demand and express their voice because the country belongs to the citizens. And if I may add, Princess Udon Aratana is the most popular part of the royal family in Thailand. She is loved by all Thais. So it's not a real good idea to say nasty things about her, wouldn't you think? Let's have a look at the history of Udon Aratana. She is the eldest child of the former king of Thailand, the one that died. In 1972, she married an American and settled in the United States, losing her royal title in the process. The couple divorced in 1998, whereupon she resumed her royal duties and position within the Thai court. She is called in English as Princess Udon Aratana without being called Her Royal Highness. In 2001, she permanently returned to Thailand after a series of visits in the years following her divorce. Almost immediately, she began to fulfill her royal duties by taking part in many ceremonies. She started many charity foundations that focused on improving the quality of life for the disadvantaged. And this is exciting. In February 2019, in an unprecedented move, Udon Ratana announced her candidate for Prime Minister of Thailand in the 2019 general election, running as a candidate of the Thaksin Allied Thai Raksa Chart Party. Later that same day, the current king of Thailand, her younger brother, issued an emergency royal degree is inappropriate and unconstitutional. Thailand's election commission then disqualified her 
from running for Prime Minister, finally putting an end to her Prime Ministerial ambitions. And believe me, if she had a run, it would have been a landslide victory. A controversial death penalty given to two men for killing two British backpackers in Thailand have had their sentence commuted to life in prison. The bodies of David Miller, 24, from Jersey and Hannah Weatheridge, 23, from Norfolk, were found on a beach in the Thai island of Koh Tao in 2014. Two Burmese nationals, Zhao Lin and Wei Pao, were convicted in Thailand's court and sentenced to death in December 2015. Lin and Pao will serve life sentences instead of following a royal degree. The two British backpackers were bludgeoned to death. A post-mortem examination showed Mrs Weatheridge had been raped. The convictions were marred in controversy, with the supporters of the two men arguing they had been framed because their initial confessions were made under due stress, or torture if you like. It has been widely written and said, two more innocent souls sent to death for being poor and vulnerable. The Thai injustice system framed these two scapegoats. The Royal Thai Police tortured them until signing a confession. The DNA found on the hoe did not match either of the suspects, which was the murder weapon. These versions of the facts are all over the internet. I think that relatives and friends just want the truth, and the right people are in custody for this horrible crime. A royal degree said the sins had been reviewed to commemorate the King of Thailand's birthday on 28th of July and to illustrate the King's clemency. It is unclear how many prisoners were eligible for any pardon or reduction of sentence under the different criteria listed in the degree. Thailand experts call for less emphasis on tourism. Business experts call for less emphasis on tourism and exports with higher taxation levels. Prime Minister Priyat Chinacha, in an appeal for unity in the face of economical adversity last week, highlighted as a key reason for the problem besetting Thailand its traditional reliance on money from tourism. The new government's economical team is currently pushing increasing public investments, domestic consumption, until the pandemic storm cloud clears. This will necessitate, according to one senior banker, one trillion baht more in extra government funding or borrowings. It comes as Thailand's banks appear to be holding their own liquidity and lending to businesses on the rise. Behind Thailand's closed borders, a new consensus is emerging among economical experts. Planners and the new government's economical team are saying that the kingdom needs to move away from its dependence on both tourism and exports as a result of the current Chinese coronavirus pandemic. House of Representative Committee heard calls from both senior bankers and economic experts for a hike in taxation on Thai firms and an expansion of the tax base to promote an economy more reliant on domestic consumption. It comes as the new Ministry of Labor has promised his department alone will create over 90,000 jobs and has appealed to the other government departments to create further employment opportunities. I think it's every goal in the world of every government to become self-sufficient, but in this world, no, I don't think so. No, no government's going to become self-sufficient. Well, not at least in this current climate. An Australian man and his girlfriend, serving time in Bali's most notorious prisons, has had his sentence and her sentence reduced as part of Indonesia's Independence Day celebration. Brendan Johnson, 45, was arrested with his Indonesian girlfriend, Rami Parawanto, also 45, at their Kuta home in August 2018. Johnson was found with 11.6 grams of cocaine and sentenced to five years and four months jail in Karabagan prison. Johnson and his girlfriend were initially facing a maximum penalty of life imprisonment and the possibility of a death sentence. 
Under Indonesia's drug laws, any found to be dealing more than five grams of cocaine can be hit with a maximum penalty, which includes death. But thanks to Indonesia's traditional slashing jail time in August the 17th, the day the nation became independent of the Dutch, the drug traffickers both had three months knocked off their sentence. Prosecutors suggested that Johnson and his girlfriend had been dealing drugs in the Kuta area for about five years before their arrest. So they did get off lightly, I think. Their operation was uncovered when police raided a boarding house where a woman was found with packets of cocaine in her pocket, along with two packets in a sanitary pad, packed, and one packet in a pillow from Brendan's girlfriend, which led the police to raid the couple's beachside home. Along with the prison sentence, the pair were also fined more than $80,000 each. Johnson and his girlfriend accepted the penalty and did not appeal the conviction. But anyway, they've had their sentences reduced by three months each. That's nice, isn't it? The Mr. and Mrs. Deaf Pageant of Thailand. More than 40 contestants with impaired hearing will take to the stage to compete for the crown of Miss and Mr. Deaf Thailand at the Kingdom's first pandemic era pageant. The organisers of Miss and Mr. Deaf Thailand announced the show will go on this month for the annual beauty pageant competition, but with social distancing measures strictly enforced through the event. 43 contestants, men, women and transsexual, will participate in the preliminary on August the 22nd at the Sukhasol Bangkok Hotel in the Paya Thai area. The finals will be held September the 5th at Jaranthip Restaurant on Sinagarindra Road. Three winners will emerge to be crowned Miss Deaf Thailand and Mr. Deaf Thailand and Miss Queen Deaf Thailand. Underage girls found at sex party in Sakao. A 29-year-old Cambodian man was arrested in Western Thailand, province of Sakao, and charged with procuring women under the age of 18 for sex. The Thai Interior Ministry officials and members of the International Organization Against Human Trafficking took action after they found online messages inviting clients to join a sex party at a Thai resort. Two of the young women joined the party are aged 16 and 17 year old. The Cambodian man faces two charges of procuring underage girls for sex and downloading indecent messages and photos into a computer. Struggling Koh Samui or Samui Island, Thailand needs your help. It's the second largest island and it lies off the Gulf of Thailand. Koh Samui Island is a cosmopolitan melting pot, attracting budget travellers staying for a month or two in simple beachside bungalows. For the wealthiest holidaymakers dropping in for a weekend or one or two in luxury resorts or villas on the many white sand beaches of Koh Samui. Desperate for tourist revenue on the ongoing Chinese coronavirus outbreak in Thailand, with the ongoing travel ban and a few domestic travellers, the president of the Tourism Association of Koh Samui will meet with the Centre for COVID-19 Foreign Tourism to visit Koh Samui. Koh Samui saw 2.3 million tourists in 2019, but there are virtually none now because of the Chinese coronavirus pandemic. Recent forums between entrepreneurs on the resort island and the Immigration Bureau about new standards operating procedures. During the Chinese coronavirus crisis, they said tourism businesses are ready to welcome back foreign tourists, though none are arriving due to the ongoing ban on foreign arrivals. They proposed that foreign tourists be required to be quarantined at a hotel for 14 days before they can leave the grounds. Eligible foreign tourists would have to travel to Thailand with Thai Airways and undergo swab tests once they arrive at Sawinapum Airport. They could then take a flight to Koh Samui without going through a second immigration process. If tourists test negative for seven days, they could leave their room, but not the hotel. 
After 14 days, they could be allowed to travel outside with special wristbands for tracking them. They also called on the government to work with Thai Airways to provide discount air tickets for foreign tourists. Koh Samui today has no tourists, whether they're Thai or foreigners. And all types of businesses are still seriously affected by the virus, despite the government's measures to help tourists pay for hotel stays. At the same time, local entrepreneurs must rely on the only airline that provides direct flights to Koh Samui. The Samui Airport's flight monopoly makes fares expensive, even during those periods when the government is promoting domestic tourism, according to one hotelier. Well, that's a good way to kill your trade during a pandemic. One of Koh Samui's hopes is the construction of a 17-kilometer bridge to connect the mainland to the island of Koh Samui. This will be a very easy way to reach the island. And hotels with accommodating 40,000 rooms are pinning their hopes on the bridge. Now the local businesses and people are raising petitions to the province to build the bridge. And to think when I was in Koh Samui last, they were complaining about too many tourists and how the island could not sustain the amount of tourists coming in. Gee, careful what you wish for. In Thailand, Mother's Day is celebrated annually on August the 12th, as it is the birthday of Her Majesty Queen Seraket, the Queen Mother, who is also regarded as the mother of all Thailand. Born on August the 12th, 1932, during the reign of His Majesty the King, Her Majesty Queen Seraket was also seen by his side while he was working royal duties across Thailand. She had captured the hearts of the Thai people through her devotion and her compassion and had always been a symbol of hope and encouragement for the country. To celebrate Mother's Day in Thailand, the Thai people will raise national flags and the Queen Mother's personal flag and decorate their places with portraits of the Queen Mother as it is their way of expressing their loyalty and honour to her. Children traditionally give their mother jasmine flowers, which symbolizes motherhood and unconditional love. Some families will reunite and take their elderly mothers for a dinner. It is also a perfect occasion for anyone in the family to meet and enjoy their time together. And from Thailand Unplugged and Talk Back Thailand and all the people involved, long live the Queen Mother and happy birthday and a happy Mother's Day.